You are getting very sleepy. You are getting... <laughs> I've never been hypnotized. Um, but, you know, when people go into the active state of slumber, they feel that they are not in control. My name is Kojo Thompson, and I am the co-founder, president of business development, and exercise research physiologist for Okina 7. Sleep is very important for recovery, and it's very peaceful when, when we're honestly not in control, because we're not controlling our breaths as we sleep. And we are restoring our energy so that we can go forth and do something the next day. But there's something that happens during this sleep that scares some of us. It's called sleep paralysis. Now, sleep paralysis, uh, defined by doctors, just to get a proper explanation offline, um, just because remember I'm telling you how this is in the triangle of wellness and you're trying to figure out a tool so that you can get over this sleep paralysis that is happening to you, this loss of control during your sleep that is very scary for the people that have gone through it. I've gone through it. Um, going through the explanation is basically um, you are in a sleep conscious state, so you're asleep, your eyes are closed. You cannot open your eyes, you cannot move your body because you feel as though there is a pressure or there is something that has locked up every sort of system in your body to where you cannot have control over your bodily movements. Your mind is still there. You are still able to think, process things, yet, yet you are not in control of your body. It's a very scary thing that can happen to people and they can stay in it for some points in time. Now, according to online, when you are looking at what sleep paralysis is to give you guys a definition. They say sleep paralysis is a phenomenon in which an individual, either during falling asleep or awakening, briefly experiences an inability to move, speak, or react. It is a transitional state between wakefulness and sleep. It is often accompanied by terrifying hallucinations to which one is unable to react due to paralysis and physical experiences, such as a strong current running through the upper body. These hallucinations often involve a person or supernatural creature suffocating or terrifying the individual accompanied by a feeling of pressure on one's chest and difficulty breathing. Another common hallucination type involves intruders, human or supernatural, entering one's room or looking outside one's window, accompanied by a feeling of dread. Now, I, I'm going to tell you how to combat these sleep paralysis things that are going through and basically terrifying a lot of people and people don't want to talk to it. They feel like a sort of pill or a sort of medication is going to take care of the problem that is going on with them. But I tell you that the problem can be fixed. It can be altered. Do you have trust and faithfulness in what I'm about to tell you in the tools that you can use to do these things? There is scriptural tools that were told to us about wherever we sleep, whether it's in a place that is not a bed. It is one of the prophets, one of the, one of the um, our fathers, they anointed a rock that was in a desert with oil, speaking about of the importance of anointing the place where you lay your head so things cannot come in and control. The place where you lay your head is very important because you are not in a place of control once you close your eyes. You are open to attack. The ways that you can cause this 
to go more in your favor. Think positive thoughts as you are going to sleep, yes. Do not think of what you have to do tomorrow, or any worries, or someone who has not called you back on the phone, someone who has not replied to you, someone that you are wishing to like you that um, hasn't showed you the attention that you want to be shown. These can induce um, nightmares. So go to sleep with a positive thinking. That is the first tool. The second tool is I want you to take oil, any sort of oil, olive oil, um, vegetable oil, any sort of oil. This oil represents the blood of Jesus that came and was slain for us. This blood will represent fire. I want you to take this blood and I want you to anoint your bed, your pillow. So take the oil and have it in your hand and sprinkle it upon your pillow, sprinkle it upon your bed, your mattress, all of these different things. Listen to me. This will help you. This is the tool, the second tool. Take this oil as well. If you can put it on top of your roof, put it on top of the room that you are sleeping in, but also anoint your walls. Sprinkle the oil upon the walls and upon the door. Protect the door with the fire. Because these creatures, these demons, these things that are harming your sleep, that are not allowing for you to move when they feel as though they're sitting upon your chest, which is a scary feeling if, for people that understand the sleep paralysis. Not only will you anoint the oil to protect you with the fire, which represents fire, you can say, Jesus, even though you cannot speak, it may come out like a murmur, like, mm hmm but if you are thinking of him and you know that his light, that his power that is given to him through the Holy Spirit can get you out of that sleep and get you out of that paralysis, use it. So the first one is think positive thoughts before you're going to sleep. The second one is anoint your pillow, your bed with oil, olive oil, any oil that you have found. You don't need to pray over it. Anoint your room with oil, your door with oil. And if you are caught in that situation where you are stuck in that sleep paralysis, you will say, Jesus, and keep saying his name until you are released from that paralysis. It worked for me. It can work for you because I know that it has worked for other people that I have told to use it. Sleep paralysis should not be a problem for you if you use these tools correct tools, truth. May God bless you and keep you. May he shine upon you and give you favor. May he show you his countenance and give you peace. Peace be with you.